going on through into supercars my name is Mike and welcome back to their brand new video today's video is going to be focusing on the ownership perspective and ownership costs of the 2022 BMW M5 CS after approximately one year now so far this car has covered just under 18,000 miles I think I'm in like at 17,900 now and has performed absolutely flawlessly there have been a few things wrong with the car though so far that I want to kind of address in this video and kind of also just explain the ownership perspective so far what it's been like to drive now truthfully if you guys follow us on Instagram at 312 supercars or have watched other videos I can honestly tell you this is one of the best sedans I've ever driven I've also done a review of the car as well which I will link down below so definitely go check that out to begin let's do a quick walk around of the car and kind of explain the spec and then we'll move in to kind of again the ownership costs and the ownership perspective Interior wise, the car is finished in hatch gray metallic, which is this beautiful deep gray from BMW. Could have also ordered the M5 CS in a frozen gray or a frozen green. But personally for me, hatch gray metallic was the way to go. I just think it accentuates the bronze wheels, the gold carbon ceramic brakes, and then these incredible yellow daytime running lights, which I know the sun's kind of in the way, but there you guys go. That eye is just so beautiful. You also have, again, the bronze kidney uh, bean grills up front that are no Nowhere near as bad as they are on the G80 and again carbon fiber all throughout now so far I haven't had many problems with anything really with the front of the car I did PPF most of the front bumper um, I did wait a little bit so there are a couple rock chips and stuff but again this car is a daily driver I intend on keeping this for a very long time it's not always gonna look perfect so one thing that I've already kind of uh, you know marked up is my carbon fiber front um, splitter here I did kind of scrape it a little bit right here pulling into a spot again this is wear and tear item I think those things always kind of get scraped up. Um, I eventually will replace that, but that's the only thing that I really don't like on the front of the car. The only other thing I don't like is kind of these, again, vents here, where, again, a lot of branches and twigs will pop in. Again, more of just a hassle of cleaning, but again, that's really being nitpicky. I love the way the front of the car, again, looks. I think it's still very aggressive, still very F90 M5-like, and again, not too overbearing with BMW's new styling. The carbon ceramic brakes have been excellent so far. I don't really take this car on the track. I don't intend tend to take it on the track, but if I, you know, would, I think I feel pretty confident with these brakes. They're, they're really awesome. Again, with 20,000 miles, I really don't notice any difference in the braking, and again, that's a big selling point of the carbon ceramics. Going down the side of the car, you have hatch gray metallic. Um, you just have your carbon fiber mirror caps, and then you have your carbon fiber roof as well. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting, they didn't do any carbon fiber on the side rocker panels or anything. Um, I did do it aftermarket carbon fiber mud flaps here to kind of prevent against the side of the car from getting scratched and I'm really glad I did because these big tires do definitely kick up a lot of rocks. I have had to spend about $2,000 on new tires so far. Currently I'm running Pirellis. I actually just got them through the dealership which again I don't really recommend. You can always find better deals elsewhere but my tires were really bad and I was kind of in a pinch so I went through the dealer for these. I personally would run Michelin's. I don't like the way Pirellis drive on this car. I have H&R springs on here as well and you know the H&R springs mixed with the Pirellis. I personally would go with KW Springs and, again, Michelin's. I think that's the better setup than Pirelli and H&R. Not that they're bad. I have H&R's on a 993 that we have in the collection. I just don't like the way the Pirelli's drive with this car so far. That's one big gripe I have so far. Kind of, again, walking around back. Again, bronze wheels, carbon ceramic brakes, and gold. Um, you do have, again, all the carbon fiber. Um, you have the diffuser, and you have this awesome exhaust setup. I think my favorite part is the way that this exhaust kind of breaks in over time. I love the tips. I love, again, the carbon fiber fiber diffuser back here. You have these awesome, awesome BMW taillights. One thing that I have had to replace already is the right taillight, all under warranty, of course, which is super awesome. Actually, everything on this car so far has been under warranty. There has been no things that I've had to pay for besides, again, the tires, my lowering springs, and the PPF. So really, really great ownership costs thus far. Again, I love the badging here. I did get a set of 50th anniversary badges that I will be putting on the car. I think it's more period correct. Looks cooler. You also have this amazing carbon fiber deck lid spoiler on the back as well, which again, looks super, super nice. I really don't have the urge to replace any of the carbon fiber or make it more aggressive. I think this car just comes so beautiful from the factory. I mean, looking at this angle, the hatch gray metallic, the bronze, the gold, everything goes together so nicely. Um, and this car is just such a great driving experience. Positioning to the interior of the car here now, one of my favorite parts about the car is definitely the door sills, how it illuminates M of course, but then the carbon fiber race buckets, right? These are absolutely amazing seats. Now, some people hate them, some people love them. I personally think they're the best race buckets on the market. Um, I think Porsche's is just too tough. McLaren 
Huracan, um, or McLaren or Lamborghini, excuse me. I think those are just not that good. Um, I love these. Now, you also do have race buckets in the back, kind of. These obviously don't have the beautiful carbon fiber on the back, but they're still awesome. You have the Nürburgring edged in the um, headrest, and then you have CS in the center, which I didn't even notice. Again, it's kind of stripped out back here, which I like. You still have your climate control. You still have, again, USB-C chargers in the back here, which I think is such a cool touch if you're going to road trip this. One of our mutual friends does put his kids in the back with the, um, you know, kind of race buckets back here and car seats. I think that's awesome. I always have my dog back here frequently. I mean, it's just, it's usable. That's what I like about it. Again, a little bit cumbersome back here if you're older, getting in and out. Yeah, it could be a pain in the ass, but I think the, the front's more of a pain if you're a little bit older because while well, these race buckets are a little bit more unforgiving. Now, they're nowhere near as bad as like Lamborghini or McLaren. I think Porsche actually has the worst race buckets to get in and out of. Uh, this, the, the lumber support here isn't as bad. Um, again, kind of getting in, you just have to kind of slide in and you know drop in. But I know I've had heard from a lot of people that they don't like it. You have CS on the dash. I did notice a little bit of this is kind of weathering away the more I drive it. I don't know why. Um, again, because it does kind of feel a little sticky up here and stuff. That's one thing I'm a little disappointed in from BMW. I think this could be better. I drive system is not my favorite. I think it's kind of garbage. The, the car plate does work pretty well. Um, after 20,000 miles, probably my biggest gripe about the interior aside from like these little things that are you know, popping up, um, you know, kind of her weathering away, I should say. Alcantara is doing really good, um, even after, again, the miles and stuff. I think, again, um, my older AMGs and stuff that we've had in the collection, they're kind of, I don't know, they're just, they're not as good, um, and they kind of weather away. So that's one thing to kind of keep in mind. Um, the leather here, again, a little bit of weathering. Again, the car is used a lot. I plan on keeping this car literally forever, um, so I really don't care too much about um, how it looks on the interior. Um, and, you know, again, there's a little bit of weathering away. You could always replace some of these things and make it look new. Don't get me wrong though, right? You don't want to always replace this stuff. You want to make sure that it's going to be good. I like the display up top. I think it looks really good. I just like the way everything in here comes together. You know, again, it's been a really great driving experience so far. Kind of adding up the ownership cost in the first year. BMW did do all the oil changes, all the break-in servicing, everything like that was included completely with the car's warranty. The things that did have, you know, to cost extra were the new tires, which again, I would not buy the Pirellis anymore. These did cost us about $2,000, about $1,500 for the lowering springs, so we had about $3,500. And then of course, PPF and ceramic cost another $3,500. So all in, we're all in about $7,000 thousand dollars on this car so far and honestly it's money well spent you also have to include insurance and gas those are things again that change so frequently depending on your insurance policy and gas that i really don't include these in the videos just because for everybody it usually varies if you have an insurance policy that's for collectors or something but i personally think this is one of the best driving cars on the market absolutely one of the best looking for sure especially with the direction bmw's design team is going um, i think i will keep this car for as long as i can and then buy another Another one right after that if there's god willingly something wrong with this one I, I love the car again i can't stress it enough if you're considering one definitely consider it i chose this car over a lot of other cars including the new e63 panamera turbo luso a lot of those cars just don't have the same get up and go as this car has 4.4 liter v8 630 odd horsepower it really goes and goes and goes you could also tune it and do some other things as well but again for me the only things i've done lowering springs and the new set of pirellis which again, I wouldn't recommend. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know I kind of blabbed on here, but I always like to give you guys a perspective of the car and talk a little bit about it. You guys have it. That is the 2022 BMW M5 CS approximate one year ownership review. Again, about 18,000 miles on this car so far and just been absolutely flawless. There have been a few things that have been replaced under warranty, but again, the servicing costs from BMW have been awesome. They've really done a lot of the oil changes and everything so far. And all in, it's about $7,000 on this car. But again, that includes aftermarket stuff like PPF and lowering springs, things you really don't need to do. So leave a comment down below if you guys have any other questions. Um, again, this is absolutely one of my favorite cars. If you're considering it, definitely go test drive it. It's absolutely incredible. But until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Like, comment, and subscribe if you guys are enjoyed this video, um, message us and follow us on Instagram if you have any other questions as well, and I will see you guys in the next one.